If you want to prepare a document or printout presenting an email correspondence in chronological order, you've got a challenge. You face one and possibly two significant problems. The first is that an email usually has all the previous messages in the conversation appended to it. If you print the email message, they're in reverse order, not what you want. The second problem crops up if the messages you want are not all contained in a single email. If someone in the conversation sends a new email that is not a direct reply to a previous email, then a separate chain begins. So, if you want to process several emails, you will have to deal with the likelihood that some of the messages are repeated in the chains of messages appended to each email. You have to find and discard the duplicates. Dealing with these problems is possible, but very time consuming and error prone. Now there is a solution. If you use Microsoft Outlook, there is an add-in called Print for Trial that will do exactly what you want. It's called Print for Trial because it was originally specified by a barrister who specialised in employment cases where emails were often cited in evidence and had to be presented to the court. You may have other reasons to produce this document, but the challenges and the solution are just the same. Here we are in Outlook for Office 365, the desktop version, not the web page version. Here's the Print for Trial button. You can install Print for Trial, or PFT, in any version of Outlook from Outlook 2007 onwards. To start with, I'll click the PTF button with a single email already selected. Everything you need is on this form. The first page simply shows the main details of the email I have selected. Note that it says there are three appended messages as well as the original. And there is a brief description of what each of the tab pages is for. This page shows that just two senders are involved in this correspondence. Imagine that I only want a record of what the first sender has written. I'll deselect the second sender and only messages from the first sender will be included in my document. On the Messages tab page you can see that a further set of tab pages has been created, one for each message in the email chain. Here the full message is shown and there is a tick box that allows you to select or deselect the message. Note that the first message is deselected because on the previous page I had deselected that sender. The second message is selected. I don't have to stick with these choices, I can refine them as I go along. The next page present the messages in a different way and here again you can refine your choice of which messages will be included. This grid view was included for the situations where the number of messages involved makes that tabbed view on the previous page a little unwieldy. I'll come back to this page later when I show you what happens when several emails are selected. The next page allows you to set the details of a cover page. If you want one, then tick the box. You can show the company name if required. As a title, you can use the email subject line, write your own, or leave the default. The same applies to an introductory paragraph. Use the default or write your own. The preview page shows you the result of the choices you've made so far. It's an exact copy of the documents to be produced, except that page breaks are not shown. The cover page is as I defined it, and there is a simple summary of the messages contained. Note that only two of the four messages in the email are included, because that's what I selected. Below the cover page are the messages themselves. On the print page are some further options that define how the document will be produced. You get a second chance to set whether you want a cover page. There may be occasions where you only want the cover page summary, so you can opt not to have the messages themselves. You can decide whether or not you want each message to be printed on a separate sheet, and you can decide to add hyperlinks. These will enable you to jump from the message list to the individual messages and back again, and is very useful when you're working on screen rather than paper printouts. The print option will send the document to your default printer. Printing click with a dialog box will show a dialog box which enables you to select the printer and set the number of copies. The bottom row provides a range of output formats and works in conjunction with a tick box which lets you opt to show the finished document after saving it or not. 
If this box is not ticked, then the Word button simply copies the document to the clipboard from where it can be pasted into another Word document, very useful if you're preparing a larger trial bundle document or report. You can save the document as a PDF or HTML file, with the option to show it on screen once saved. Print for Trial will remember all your settings, so doing things in your own preferred way becomes easier. Now let's take a look at what happens when you have more than one email selected. I've got six selected here. and I click the button. The job of splitting each email into separate messages and then eliminating the duplicates will take longer as each of the increasing number of messages has to be checked against the increasing number of other messages. If you select too many and don't want to wait, you may have noticed that there was a cancel button so you can stop and think again. There's no theoretical limit to the number of emails. Once the process is finished, the cancel button disappears and the summary button is shown as you can see and it shows that of the six emails that were processed, there were 25 sub-messages and 15 of these were regarded as duplicates. If I click OK and go to the messages grid, you can see that this begins to be a bit more useful when we're dealing with a larger number of messages. Now, you've got the usual details here, who the message is from and to, when it was sent to the subject. The body is just showing the plain text body and you can see just the beginning of the body but if you need to know a bit more detail if you just hover over the message you can see that slightly more of it pops up. Apart from that everything is pretty much the same. If we go to the preview we've now got a longer list of messages because we haven't deselected anything and here are I'm just going to use the hyperlink to jump down the page and I've jumped straight to message 10 and if I want to I can jump straight back to the message list and there we are. Just a couple of other tabs on the feedback page it's just a very easy way to send us feedback you just click on that and an email is prepared ready to send to us. Registration details just gives uh, details of your license and about gives details of the software version. So that's it. If you need to print an email correspondence in date order, you need Print for Trial. Print for Trial 2 is the great new version which introduces the ability to handle multiple emails and dramatically improved PDF rendering. You can download a free copy in order to evaluate it from printfortrial.com and do contact us at Greenhill Software if you want to know more. Details are below.